On a sunny day, Alice and her sister went out for a walk on the fields. Alice's sister was reading a book. Because of this, Alice got very bored. Right when she was thinking what she could do for fun, a white bunny passed by. The bunny was talking to himself. Alice was stunned because she had never seen a talking bunny before. The bunny took out a pocket watch and then... Oh no, oh no, I'm going to be so late, he said in a hurry. Alice was very impressed with what she saw. So curious to see what was going on, she went after the bunny. The bunny went through a hole in a tree trunk and Alice followed him through the same hole. Suddenly she found herself falling down in a well. The well was very deep and Alice kept on falling down slowly. While going down, the little girl saw pictures, little wardrobes and shelves. Alice felt like she was going around the world. And finally, she fell on a soft surface. She had a long corridor in front of her. Alice got up and started to walk. She saw many locked doors along the corridor and the bunny disappeared. Alice feared that she would not be able to get out of there. Right at that moment, she saw a little golden key on a three-legged small table next to her. She took the key and tried to open all the locked doors, but the key was too small for the doors. Looking around sadly, Alice realised that there was another small door behind the curtain. When she put the key in the lock, the door opened immediately. Alice was very happy when the door opened. Behind the door, there was a very beautiful garden. But because she could not fit through the door, Alice could not go out. When she returned to the table inside, she noticed a bottle with a label saying, Drink me on it. Alice took the bottle and started drinking. As she drank the potion, she began to shrink. When she got small enough, she thought she could fit through the door. But when she got back to the key, she realised that she had gotten too small to reach the table. She started to cry. At that moment, she saw a cake on the floor. The cake had a label saying, Eat me. With curiosity, Alice took a bite from the cake. At that moment, she started to grow again. Now she could get the key, but was too big to go through the door. Alice was too tired. With no hope, she started to cry again. The tears running from her eyes started to form a big puddle that reached the end of the corridor. Suddenly, the white bunny passed her in a hurry. Alice called out. Sir, sir, please, hold on a minute, help me. The bunny got away fast, without even looking at Alice. But while running, he dropped his gloves and hand fan. Alice took his stuff from the floor and when she started to fan herself, she started to shrink again. Right at that moment, she slipped and fell into the puddle. Alice and lots of different animals swimming in the water started to drift towards the shore. When they reached the shore, they were all wet and Alice saw the bunny again. This time the bunny thought she was his maid and asked her to bring his gloves and hand fan from his house. Alice went to the bunny's house in the forest. When she entered, she immediately found his gloves and hand fan. But right there, she saw another bottle on the table. She reached to the bottle and thought, if I drink this, maybe I can go back to my normal size. She took the bottle and drank the whole potion.
Instead, she became so huge she could not even move in the house. What am I going to do now? How will I get out of here? In the meantime, the bunny was waiting for Alice impatiently. Fearing from Alice, the animals started to throw rocks into the house, breaking windows. The stones landing next to Alice started to turn into small cakes. When Alice started to eat these cakes, she started to shrink again and managed to go out of the house. But this time, unfortunately, she got too small. Poor Alice got so tiny she was lost between the little bushes in the woods. She started to think about what she can do to get back to her normal size. At that moment, she saw a puppy a little further away. When she called the puppy over to Pat, she realised how much smaller she was next to the dog. She almost got squashed by the puppy's paws. When she was running, she stumbled over a mushroom. There was a blue caterpillar on the mushroom. She asked the caterpillar what she can do to get back to her normal size. The caterpillar answered with a wise manner. One side of the mushroom I am standing on will make you grow. On the other side will make you shrink. Alice took a small piece from the mushroom and put it in her mouth. Right at that moment, she had gotten so big that she could not even see her feet. To shrink back to her normal size, this time she took a piece from the other side. By eating different amounts from both sides of the mushroom, she managed to come back to her normal size. She took two pieces from each side and held them in her hand. While she was walking, she came across a tiny house. But to be able to get in, she had to shrink again. Eating the mushroom pieces, she started to shrink again. When she entered the house, Alice found herself in a kitchen. Right in the middle of the kitchen, there was a duchess standing with a baby in her arms. And on the floor, a fat cat was looking at Alice, smiling. It was the first time Alice saw a smiling cat. So she asked, curiously, Why does your cat smile like that? Because this is a Cheshire cat, said the Duchess. At the same time, the cat became invisible and the baby in the Duchess' arms started to cry. The Duchess passed the baby over to Alice. You rock the baby and stop her crying. I will go and play croquet with the Queen. Alice took the baby and started to rock. Suddenly, the Cheshire Cat appeared again and smiling again he talked to Alice. You need to find the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. <laughs> but be careful, they're both crazy. <laughs> right after their little chat, the Cheshire Cat disappeared again. Alice angrily yelled at the cat. Stop disappearing and reappearing again! You're freaking me out! Cheshire Cat appeared once again, smiling. Okay, then I will disappear slowly. Starting from his tail, Cheshire Cat started to disappear again. Only his face remained. Alice went out of the house, and in a short while she found the March Hare's house. March Hare was having tea with the Mad Hatter under a tree. March Hare put some hay between his ears. Alice could not understand why he put hay between his ears. And the Mad Hatter had a hat on his head. The mouse between them had rested his head on the table sleeping. And they both had their arms on the mouse using him as a pillow. When they saw Alice coming, they opposed saying that there was no space available. No, there's plenty of room, said Alice. Mad Hatter asked Alice. Why do you think the crow looks like a desk? Why do you think? I don't know. Alice got really bored of these stupid and rude jokes of the Mad Hatter and March Hare. She said, 
This was the stupidest meeting I have been to, and went away. Alice noticed the door in the trunk of a tree. When she entered, she found a golden key. The golden key opened the door to a beautiful garden. Entering the garden, Alice was very surprised. The gardeners of the Queen of the Hearts were painting all the white roses to red. And all the men looked like playing cards. So Alice asked, I'm curious, why are you painting all the white roses red? So the gardener answered, The Queen wanted red roses, but we accidentally grew white roses. If the Queen finds out, she will chop our heads off. Right at that moment, the Queen of Hearts came to the garden. The soldiers next to her were all in the shape of playing cards. Queen of Hearts invited this strange girl she saw for the first time to play croquet. Alice never saw a croquet field like this one before. Hedgehogs were balls and flamingos were the croquet mullets. In the middle of the game, the players started to fight and throw hedgehogs at each other. The Queen was very upset with this situation. She suddenly stomped her foot on the floor and yelled with anger. Chop off the heads of all the players who fight! The Queen of Hearts was so angry, she cancelled the croquet party. And suddenly, there was a loud voice. The trial has begun! Everybody started to run towards the court. A trial was going to be held for Jack of Hearts, who supposedly had stolen a pie from the Queen's kitchen. The Queen could not catch the Jack of Hearts during this incident, therefore she could not punish him. The Jack of Hearts was held in prison during his trial. The White Rabbit started to read from the roll of paper he was holding. On a beautiful summer day, our Queen of Hearts had baked delicious pies, and Jack of Hearts had stolen them. The King yelled from his seat. Call the first witness. The first witness was the Mad Hatter. When the Mad Hatter started to talk on the witness stand in front of the King, Alice suddenly started to grow. The White Rabbit announced that it was time for Alice to take the witness stand. Hearing her name being called, Alice immediately stood up. Forgetting how big she grew, when her dress tangled on the jury stand, she turned the stand upside down, making all the members of the jury fall on the floor. The Queen asked Alice to tell everything she knows. I don't know anything, Alice answered. The Queen yelled, furiously. You don't? Chop her head off too! And Alice answered bravely. I don't care about your orders. You are not my Queen and so you can't do anything to me. As soon as Alice said these words, the King, Queen and all the playing cards started to fly towards Alice. Screaming away, Alice tried to catch them. All the commotion became a big whirlpool of cards around Alice, sucking her inside and flying her up. And finally, with the leaves flying all around her, she found herself on the field again. Her sister called out. Alice, come on now, wake up. When Alice woke up, she realised that everything was a dream. Oh, wow! It was all a dream and what an amazing dream it was! Hey sis, let me tell you about my dream. You know, a white rabbit... Once upon a time, there lived a very rich man. He had three daughters. Two of them were really greedy and self-centred girls. But the third one had a heart full of love and kindness. One day, their dad received the news that his ships had sunk due to the storm. Poor man had lost everything and was left with only his little house in the village. The two greedy sisters were of course not pleased with this situation. All day long, all they were doing was sitting around and complaining. All the housework was left to beauty.
After a while, their father heard that one of his lost ships had made it to the harbour. He started to prepare to go to the harbour right away. And before he left, he asked his daughters. What should I bring you when I get back, girls? Dress, shoes, necklace and bracelets. And what about you, Beauty? What do you want? Just the rose is fine, Daddy. Their father arrived at the harbour after a long journey, but neither his stuff on the boat was there, nor was the ship usable. Sad and tired, he started his journey back home. It was almost dark when he reached the forest. The forest was dark and cold, and it was snowing. He rode his horse for hours and hours on the snow. And finally, he saw a castle with the lights on. He entered, hoping maybe they might help him. It was a weird castle. The lights were on everywhere. The dinner table was full of food and there was fire in the chimney. But there was no one to be seen. He called out for someone, but no one answered. Finally, not being able to wait anymore, he first ate some food from the table and then he slept in one of the beds. When he woke up in the morning, he found some new clothes next to the bed. He went downstairs. A nice breakfast was waiting for him on the table. This castle should belong to a fairy, or she wouldn't help me like this. I wish I could thank her. When he was leaving the castle, he noticed the rose garden. I could not grant my other daughter's wishes. At least I can make Beauty's wish happen, he thought to himself. Just as he picked a rose, he and his surroundings shook with a loud roar. An evil looking lying like beast appeared from behind the trees. The father almost fainted when he saw the beast. I saved your life. I fed you. I gave you new clothes. And here you are, stealing my roses. Is this how you thank me? The man went on his knees and begged him. Said that he wanted to take one of the roses to his daughter. What you did will not go unpunished. Please forgive me. I will forgive you with only one condition. Talk to your daughters. If one of them agrees to live here with me, I will grant your life. The man jumped on his horse and sadly head home. When at home, the two greedy sisters listened to the horrific story their dad went through, but did not even hear the beast's proposal. But Beauty did not behave like her sisters. Daddy, if you allow me, I accept to go next to the beast. The two sisters immediately accepted her proposal because they thought that everything that happened was her fault. Sad and hopeless, her father took Beauty and head to the castle. When they arrived, Everything was like before. The food was on the table and there was no one around. Just as they sat down and started to eat, the beast came out. Beauty started to shake out of fear. Because the beast was as scary as her father had told her, Beast asked with a soft voice, did you come here with your own will? Um, yes. Then in the morning, your father will go away and never come back. 
When she woke up in the morning, Beauty knew that her father was gone, and she found a nice breakfast waiting for her on the table. She wandered around in the garden for a while. She felt sad when she looked at the roses. Then she went around in the castle. One of the doors was full of roses. She wondered. She opened the door and peeked inside. The room was decorated just like she would have liked, and it was full of books, flowers, and musical instruments. She thought that someone who can arrange a room like this would not hurt anybody. Then she took a book. On the book was written in gold letters, "My dear Queen, your wish is my command." I wish I could see my father now. As soon as Beauty said it, her father appeared in the mirror across the room. Beauty was so surprised seeing her father made her happy again. That night at dinner, Beast appeared again. Would you let me watch you, Beauty? You own the place. Why would you ask me? No. You own this castle now. If you want, I can leave immediately. Beauty was very surprised with his answer. I want to ask you something. Do you think I'm really ugly? At first, she did not know what to say. Then she lifted her head to look at Beast, and nodded as to say yes. Well, would you marry me then? This time, Beauty answered harshly. No. Beast turned around, sad, and left Beauty alone. Beast was visiting Beauty every night at dinner, and he treated her very kind. As the days passed, Beauty felt like she was getting used to Beast. I wish he wasn't that ugly. A couple months passed. Beauty was no longer scared of Beast. She even started to like him. But one day, she saw in the mirror that her father was ill. She raced next to Beast and asked him to let her go home, because she wanted to take care of her sick father. Of course, you can go. But if you don't come back, I might die from sadness. I will come back after a week. I promise. Beast gave Beauty a ring. When she would put this ring on her nightstand and fall asleep, she would wake up back in the castle. The next morning, she woke up in her own bed in her father's house. She ran to her father at once. When her father saw her, he was so happy. That he felt better. In the afternoon, Beauty's sisters, who recently had gotten married, came to visit their father. When they found Beauty at home, they were furious with envy and anger, and they decided to play a little trick on her. Let's make her stay here one more week. Then the beast will come and kill her. The two sisters came next to Beauty. Crying and told her that they didn't want to be apart. Beauty promised to stay one more week. Not long after, Beauty realized that she missed Beast. One day, she saw a dream where Beast was lifeless on the ground in the castle's garden. She woke up in a sweat. What I'm doing is cruel and selfish. So she immediately took the ring off her finger, put it on the nightstand beside her, and she woke up in the beast's castle in the morning. She waited for the beast all day long, but he was nowhere to be seen. She waited for hours and hours, but beast did not come. Suddenly, she went running into the garden. 
Beast was lying down lifeless on the ground, just like she saw in her dream. Beauty ran next to him and hugged him. Beast's heart was still beating. He rarely opened his eyes and spoke with difficulty. I thought you weren't coming back. I stopped eating and prepared to die. But I love you and I want to marry you. At that instant, something magical happened. Suddenly the castle became brighter and more beautiful. Beauty looked around stunned and then she turned her head back to the beast. But where the ugly beast was lying, now there was a young and handsome prince. When she saw him, Beauty started to cry. Who are you? And where did the beast go? Prince stood up and started to tell. I am the beast. An evil witch put a spell on me. She turned me into an ugly beast. If you hadn't said that you wanted to marry me, I would have had to live my life as a beast forever. When she heard this, Beauty was much happier. With her good heart, she found true love. Beauty and the Prince got married and lived happily ever after.